Hello everyone and welcome to another painting video where I take uh, Commandant, it's Commandant, Sorsha Kratikov from War Machine and paint her up using a little bit of airbrushing uh, to do some priming, some zenithing, and then we get to play with something called Ghost Tint. So if you've never heard of Ghost Tint before, you can check that out in the video as well. Um, beyond that, it's just very simple. Um, a lot of uh, blocking out colour, shading it, highlighting it, and the end result is something that anybody should be happy putting down on the table. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So here we have Sorsha uh, built and primed with the airbrush. So she's been primed in Steinal Res Black and what I'm going to aim for here is to make her look quite heavy and quite shaded and stuff like that. So the priming is the important stage. So what I'm going to be doing now is a three-tone prime. So the black is obviously the base. The next step is going to be moving up to a grey, which I'm going to be using the Steinal Res grey for. And this is going to be a more, uh, slightly an overall. I have it on the airbrush here, so... What it is, is hitting the airbrush at sort of a 45 degree angle, and then the top one, which will be white, we'll do at a higher angle. So let's have a look. So with the grey down, you can see that she almost looks entirely grey again, but when you rotate the model over, we have that deepest shadow, which is still retained by our black primer. So overall, I think that's looking okay. Now we can move on to the white, and for the white we're going to be using again Steinal Res, but the white airbrush primer. So we have that in the airbrush, and what we're going to be doing now is applying it essentially in a completely top-down manner. So we're going to attack the model like so, and we'll bring the airbrush in and... So this is what we get when we do a completely top-down uh, prime with the white. We get this beautiful fade in the shadows. We go from the very top white, it then starts to fade through to the grey, and then as we rotate the model back again, we have still retained enough of the black to accentuate all the shadows and the curvature of the armour. So at this stage I'm going to let this sit and cure for a while. I'm going to give it about 20 minutes or so and that's not because it takes 20 minutes to dry, I just want to make sure that the paint has settled completely and everything is completely bone dry because we could have little spots that might still be a little damp or you know, just areas that need to settle down a bit. I always like to leave my airbrush primer about 20 minutes to half an hour before pushing on with any sort of colour. It also gives me an opportunity to clean out my airbrush and stuff and have it ready with the next colour that we're going to be looking at. So we're going to let that sit for about 20 minutes, come back and then we'll be able to put down our red. So having given Sorsha about 20 minutes uh, to dry and cure properly. I've also cleaned out my airbrush and changed it over to my next colour. We're going to be applying the red now and I'm going to be using something I haven't used in a long time and really wish I had been using more of basically ever since. And this is the stuff. This is Ghost Tint. This is the Fresh Blood Ghost Tint and it is superb for painting models that need to be red. It gives you... Okay, fair enough. It gives you a gloss finish but it is transparent enough that every piece of shading we've just done is going to be retained on the model and it will give a sort of a, a candy finish. So what it also sets you up for because of that gloss finish, it allows you to go in, base coat other things, shade if you want to add a bit more shading here and there. Um, but in this situation, what I'm going to be doing is putting it down and then giving the model a matte varnish. That way we can see immediately if we want to add any extra highlights or anything like that, we'll mat it all down, check it out and see what happens. Yeah. So I have it again in my airbrush. This has a little bit of thinner in it, not too much, just a few drops in the bottom of the cup just to aid uh, with the flow of the, the fluid. So it's going to go down very thin, which means we have to do multiple coats. That's fine for when we're doing something awesome like a, a commander figure, um, can be a little problematic if you've got a lot of infantry or a lot of war jacks and stuff in your war machine force. But I think the the payoff is worth the effort. The payoff is worth the time. So let's try it. Let's apply some and see how we get on. Now we're going to be doing this in several layers. So my editor, my, my lovely editor, Ryan, may have to um, just cut to the end basically. 
but we'll show the first layer. So I've spent some time with this now and added maybe another four or five passes uh, with the ghost tint. And as you can see, it's a very deep, it's a very rich red. And as you can also quite plainly see, it's very, very gloss. But what's cool about this stuff is it tends to sit, sit and dry very smooth. So what we have is an incredibly smooth finish with a bit of a gloss, well, a very high gloss. That's fine if you're looking for that candy finish. However, I'm only looking for the coloration of it more than anything else. And what we have is a very heavily highlighted and shaded base color, which I think looks pretty decent. Now, we're not really going to get a full sense of how much this is highlighted and shaded because of the, the gloss effect. So I'm going to be giving it a, an, an airbrush coat of Storm Shield. This is essentially the matte varnish. Now I'm putting that through the airbrush without any thinning. I always like to put my matte varnishes through the airbrush without any thinning at all. Um, and then I just wash the airbrush a bit more um, thoroughly. I do that because in some cases adding thinner tends to, I don't know, sometimes, particularly with the Army Painter one, it affects the actual finish. It doesn't come out super matte, it comes out a little bit satin. So, anyway, let's get a coat of it down and then we'll be able to see just how red and what our tones look like. So now with the matte varnish down, this is probably going to take about an hour or so to completely cure because when you put this, what I find is when you put the matte varnish through neat through an airbrush, it uh, tends to remain quite tacky for a while, especially now that I've built it up by maybe three or four passes there. So it will be tacky for a while, so just keep that in mind if that's what you're doing. It's the same thing with the ghost tint. If you've put down a lot of it, it will be tacky for a good hour or so. So. I left it for about an hour, an hour and a half, just to dry before putting down uh, the matte varnish. But what you can see is we have a very interesting, quite cartoony-esque sort of shading. You know, the in some cases, the red completely dulls out, particularly down her left leg here. And red, in reality, wouldn't look like this out in daylight. But remember, we're trying to do a high contrast, high sort of coloration look. And I think we've got that. We've got this good rich red over her more important areas. So on her chest, head, shoulders, and this leg that's protruding forward. That's giving us that sense of the entire model is red. All her armor is colored red. So at this point, we're gonna let it cure properly. I'm gonna give it a good hour or so. And uh, when we come back, we can start looking at either well, we're probably not going to highlight the red much more than what it already has. Maybe a little touch here and there, but we might leave that to after we've got some details down. So the first details I'm going to tackle once this is cured is the metallics. We're going to get into the, the deeper details back here around her hips and so on and get all the mechanical stuff sorted. That way we can then move on and start looking at our upper details like the um, the riveting, the um, the lining of panels and stuff like that. So. That's our next port of call, will be our mechanical details. With our matte varnish now down, we can work on our um, metallics. And for our metallics, we're going to be using a Citadel Lead Belcher. And this is just going to be painting anything I want uh, that's mechanical. So we're going to be looking at like the gun, the head of the, um, I can't even remember what the name is, and all the mechanical parts of the suit that she's wearing. Uh, now obviously I'm going to be leaving some of them out because I'm going to be painting them in brass and so on like that. So let's just get started. Let's start way down in here with some of this. With the lead belcher down, we can have a quick look at what details I've included. So parts of the weapon, 
including the head and parts of the shaft. Most of the detail really is on the back here, catching in all these pistons and joints and so on. Uh, there's also a couple of little joints in the elbows and there's a sort of a ball joint at the top of the arm which I've caught just a little bit. It's hard to see. And then some other bits of piping and of course the weapon, uh, which is absolutely awesome. It's attached to the, the suit so if she lets go of it with her hand it'll fold out of the way and let her use her her uh, scythe sort of two-handed which is class. And then we have the exhaust on the backpack. So from there we're going to be moving on to our black detailing. Now the black detailing is going to be encompassing a lot of um, panel edges and panel lines and stuff like that. So there's going to be like accentuated parts on the top of the shoulders, these bits underneath the shoulder right here I'm just trying to highlight with my finger, and then sort of these lines that sort of segment uh, part of her chest plate and maybe the knee pads as well, and probably the wrists or the hand guards. And we'll just go across and just pick all those details out. And we're going to be doing that with uh, Corvus Black. Because once we do that, we can then wash Corvus Black and the metallic stuff at the same time. And we can actually start highlighting both those colours around the same step. So let's get some Corvus Black here. Get it onto my brush and make sure it's a bit thinner. And for example, let's just start on a knee pad. So... I'm just going to take in the whole knee pad because I'm going to do the studs in gold, I think. I want to make sure that we have that nice and neat. And what we'll probably do as well is maybe just line it in some brass or gold as well at a later point. So let's look at... Well, the underside of the shoulders is another spot I want to pick out. And it's just a case of doing this all across the model and picking out areas that we want to be this colour. With the Corvus Black now down, we can see just what I'm trying to do here, sort of line and edge a lot of the, uh, the detail on our armour. And as we do more of this, you start to see that cartooniness starting to come out a little bit more. She looks pretty convincing now to my eyes. I, I quite like where I'm going with this. So, before we move any... F well, before we look at any washes, we're going to start adding uh, some brass detail. And we're going to be starting with my um, MIG Old Brass, which is a really great colour. And it's quite a thin paint, goes down really smooth. And because it goes down really smooth, it becomes very, very shiny. So what we're looking at doing here is getting in all our detail parts. So we're going to be doing the weapon. Just picking out bits like that. And then other locations as well. Also, I have to note I put a bit more lead belcher here on this sort of grill here on front on the front of her chest plate. Um, I'm going to be picking out a lot of the rivets and, and stuff as well, and maybe lining a few bits around the knee joints and stuff like that. So I think these two icons as well, I'm probably going to do them in in the old brass, because the, the big one on her shoulder is in the, the Corvus Black, and we're going to highlight that up and make it look a bit more epic. But these two, I'm going to make them look quite bright. So we'll go around the model, put the old brass down on any details uh, I feel like I want uh, that colour to be on. And then when we come back, we should be able, or should be in a position uh, to start applying some wash. With the gold all down now, we really start to see Sorsha starting to look very important. I always want to make the commanders of my forces look important. So adding more bright colours to what is essentially just a red and black scheme gives her that uh, sense of importance. Now we're going to start shading it all. And for the shade, we're going to be using Null Oil. And we're going to be applying it to everything that we've painted Corvus Black and everything that we've painted in the old brass. So we're going to get a brush and make a start on that. Before we continue, I'm going to briefly point out that the tabard here 
underneath this armor plate I hadn't done anything with so I've quickly coated it or base coated it in um, Corax, yeah Corvus Black sorry and then um, given it a null oil wash just to bring it up to the same level as all the other uh, black details. Now I'm going to start to highlight the metals and for this I'm going to be using Necron Compound and applying it with a soft brush in a sort of a dry brushy sort of uh, method. So let's just get started and see what we get. And you notice the way that I'm drawing the brush, I'm drawing it laterally across the detail I want highlighted. And what that's doing is giving me a bit of an edge highlight, but also on the barrel end is giving me this sort of bit of coloration there as well to show that that's a bit more, not in shadow, it's a bit more uh, lit up. Okay, so that is going to do it for the metal detail. Just to give that a little bit of highlight and a little bit of uh, contrast there, as you can see. Uh, particularly around the back where all this other uh, mechanical work has been done. So, with that done, I'm going to do one other quick little thing before we move on to working on her face. And what I'm going to be doing is the little bit of ruffle at the bottom of her tabard. I'm going to be briefly base coating that in grey sear. So pretty straightforward, we're just going to get that done and out of the way. It'll probably need a couple of coats, but we'll put one down now. Okay. So with the grey sear down on the bottom of the tabard, we're going to start working on her face. And if I can quickly find it on my table here. We're going to start by base coating her skin in heavy skin tone. It's game colour extra opaque from Vallejo. Put a little bit of that down onto my palette. And we're going to have to get a, well, a small-ish brush. That one will probably do. And I'm just going to give that a bit of a base coat. Okay, so while that skin tone is drying, I'm going to base coat her um, Ushanka, or yeah, Ushanka, I'm going to call it an Ushanka, because it is an Ushanka. And for this, we're going to go with um, Mournfang Brown, just because it's going to change things up a bit from just being a lot of red and stuff like that. I, I, we need to break that a little bit. So we'll give that a coat of Mournfang Brown. Okay, that should do it for that. Now, let's get back on to working on her skin tone. So the next one we're going to do is Kislev Flesh. And we're going to put this as a layer over her more upper, the upper surfaces on her face, like her nose, cheekbones, chin, that sort of stuff. And the reason we're going to do this now is because we're then going to put a wash over it and then we're going to highlight it with a paler colour because um, from kind of what I've gathered, uh, Kadorians are quite pale and Sorsha herself I, I think is, is quite pale skinned. So let's get in there and just do a little bit of this. Okay, so at this stage, we'll be able to leave all this to dry for a few minutes. And then when we come back, we can start adding more to the skin. We'll get the skin uh, washed down, and then we'll start working on the Ushanka again. So now the skin tones have dried. The time is now to wash uh, the skin down. And for this, I'm using Game Ink, which is a Vallejo ink. And uh, it's just skin wash. So because it's quite a heavy ink out of the bottle, it needs to be fairly heavily watered down because it is very very heavy pigmented so all we need to do is get in there 
and just apply that to the skin. And I think that's basically all that needs. Now, let's move on to her hair. So her hair is black, but we're not going to paint it black. We're going to paint it with um, Citadel Dark Reaper. That way, we're, what we're going to do next then is apply a null oil wash and that will basically shade it down and make it look like black with a bit of highlight, you know, a bit of light hitting it, so. So with that done, I'm waiting to dry. We're gonna return to the Ushanka and I'm gonna reach behind me here because we're gonna be using some uh, Agrax or shade just to shade down the, the Ushanka a little bit. So once that's dry, we can then go in with some of our old brass and just paint in that um, symbol on our f on the forehead of the Ushanka. So, the skin wash, let me see, is it dry? It's certainly dry enough. We're going to do our final bit of highlighting to our skin tone. And for that, we're going with another Vallejo color, which is flat flesh. This is just a little bit lighter than everything we've put down already and should give Sorsha a little bit of um, highlight to her skin. So in this instance, what we're looking for is the nose. Like that, and then her cheekbones. So maybe not the best skin tone I've ever done, but <laughs> it should be all right. It'll be fine once the rest of it's finished, clearly. Uh, we'll move back onto her hair now, and we will apply some null oil to that. Now, we'll return to our, uh, our old brass, and we'll just paint in that symbol on the forehead of her Ushanka. Now, the next thing we're going to do is highlight our black detail. Again, we're going to do this fairly briefly. So we're going to go to Thunderhawk Blue. And what we're going to use uh, to apply this is the side of a brush. So I can get some onto my brush here quick. And all I'm going to do is just take in some of these edges, just these really sharp edges. Think so just here on her shoulder okay so a bit minimalist on the highlighting for the black but I'm quite content with that now the null oil on her hair is dry but it's really not dark enough, so we're going to quickly give it a second null oil. And then I think, what should my next step be? Apart from strip all the paint off and start again. <laughs> Let's uh, get a little bit of um, a highlight onto our brass because we haven't really done anything else to it apart from give it the initial colouring. So our highlight colour is going to be another MIG colour here which is our brass which is a really bright colour. And again just with the side of the brush we're just going to add a little bit of a glint to some of our gold. So just the edges of things. And maybe just touch the one on the Ushanka. Now 
and that should be enough. So my very final step, this is going to be the final step by the way, um, I am going to introduce a contrast paint because it annoys some people and I, I find that kind of funny. So we're going to be using some Apothecary White and we're going to be applying it to the bottom of her tabard. So. Just like that. Then on the other side like that. So that's pretty much the miniature finished. What I will do is wait for it all to dry. Uh, do a little bit of maybe some corrective steps, you know, sort of add a little highlight here or there or um, particularly get a little closer look at that skin tone and see if there's anything, well, there's bound to be something I can improve on that. But if I don't want to do that, that's fine. We'll just uh, give the whole model another coat of um, matte varnish through the airbrush, again, with only a very slight bit of thinner or completely neat, depending on what fluid you're using. So when we come back, the miniature will be matte varnished down again, and we can get a good close look at Sorsha, hopefully looking presentable. And here we have our completed Sorsha. So, as you can see, with the matte varnish down and all dry, she look, really looks the part now. And I think for anyone that's looking at getting into airbrushing or isn't sure where they're going with airbrushing, I can't recommend enough just starting with a cheaper airbrush or something that's easy to, you know, easily affordable, get a little compressor, don't worry about it too much, and just start priming and zenithing. And then if you have, if you feel like it, trying something like this, going with the ghost tints or using inks through the airbrush to get that base colour down without ruining your priming and your zenithing, it's always a very solid place to start. And that's what I like about this, because the results you get from careful zenithing and airbrush priming is great. There's really no comparison to it with the amount of labour you're putting in as per the end result when it's finished. And all we've really done on top of the airbrush work is just very simple base coat, uh, base coat shade and layer and uh, highlighting. And even at that, the highlighting isn't that extensive. So always consider, like, if you're looking at getting into an airbrush, trying something simple first, building up that muscle memory, building up your familiarity with the, the airbrush, and then just experimenting, just trying different things. But I will always recommend priming and zenithing as your first two stages of learning to work with your airbrush. Anyway, that's enough of that. Thank you very much for watching. I hope everyone's staying safe out there, and I will see you again very soon.